Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Art and I are with our favorite travel and food cuisine author and gourmand, John Mariani. John, we were talking about Ireland before. Oh, gracious. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, John. So I noticed uh, on uh, johnmariani.com, uh, the wonderful website newsletter that you maintain, uh, that you were talking about um, there seemed to be an Irish uh, flavor to it and food, and I saw a whole bunch of looked to me like cheeses and stuff like that. Uh, I assume that you did some tasting uh, along the way and some sampling on your recent trip. Uh, what special about Irish food has it changed, or was it just a trip down memory lane for you? Well, it has definitely changed, and it's it's a change of semi recent uh, proportions, meaning that Irish food has a terrible, terrible reputation, even among my Irish friends. You know, they they grew up in a family where you boiled everything, whether it needed it or not. And uh, uh, there are very, very few uh, Irish American friends of mine refer to their mother's cooking with much fondness. Um, and it's, it was not entirely unfair because up until 20 years ago, um, Ireland is, is a coastline of 3,000 miles around of eddies and coves. And in there live lobsters and crabs and mussels and oysters and, and all this wonderful shellfish. And they have a lot of dairy cows and they have a lot of pasture, but they weren't utilizing what they had as well as they might have done so. So if you go back 20 years ago to Ireland, you could eat well, but pretty much all of the better restaurants in Dublin and, and uh, Kilkenny and Galway and other places were serving continental cuisine and the seafood was generally shipped in from other places in the North Sea, from Scandinavia, the salmon and so forth. Um, the ingredients weren't what they were. The cheeses would come in from France um, or, or you'd get Gloucester or Stilton from, from England. <clears throat> so they weren't taking advantage of their own ingredients. Well, 20 years ago, a new generation of young cooks, Irish cooks, who had been trained in the best kitchens in restaurants in both Europe and uh, the United Kingdom, but I started to open their own places. And 10 years ago, it was still had a continental uh, cast, but they were using, I'm very proud of, they would print on the menu, where our food comes from. This has been a radical change, which I call the Gaelic uh, uh, silver age for cuisine. Uh, and now I can say this without uh, any fear of of uh, retribution <laughs> or contradiction that you can eat as well in the best restaurants in Ireland as you can anywhere in uh, the UK or um, any place except perhaps France or Italy on the continent. It's really quite a remarkable change. What, uh, what kind of cuisine do you call, I, I mean, how do you define Irish food these days? Well, First of all, when you mention or one, when you hear corned beef and cabbage, corned beef and cabbage, you can find it if you look in Ireland, but it's not one of the things they serve all the time. And I didn't see it on a single menu. You might find some corned beef with some other thing, but it's just not a sip. Uh, here in America, it's traditional to eat it on St. Patrick's Day. It's in every Irish pub. But corned beef and cabbage is not something that they really eat much of. Um, so what you would go to and find at a typical Irish pub, um, shepherd's pie and a few other things, um, is not that much favored, except perhaps an Irish pub in, in Ireland. They do terrific fish and chips. They always have. Um, and you can find uh, good pubs doing fish and chips and shepherd's pie and traditional um, um, food like that, bangers and mash. The breakfasts are always sumptuous. And better than ever because here's a lesson the irish eggs are from the irish chickens i don't know what they feed on it is that they're obviously free range are some of the best tasting eggs in the world they're just remarkable their butter is non pareil i mean it's as good or better than anything that they make in in italy um 
uh, or the, most of the continent, uh, even even France. Um, you know, Kerry Gold, the, the you can buy it. It's the second best best selling butter in America after Land of Lakes. I was astonished by that because it's yeah. really good butter. Okay, um, cheeses. Cheese traditionally in Ireland had been made on farms by artisans in small communities, sold in the small communities, and they never trademarked anything. So if you say name an Irish cheese, there's almost nothing you can name that is an Irish cheese, as you can with British cheeses like Stilton, Gloucester, and, and French cheeses like Brie and Camembert. Um, they don't have that. What they have, however, now are more and more and more small Irish uh, farmers making these wonderful, wonderful cheeses, uh, everything from cheddar styles to blue cheeses, oats cheeses, um, just terrific stuff. And you will now find them in the restaurants and sold in the groceries uh, all over the country and in small batches. So if they run out of the season's goobine, let's say, um, that's it. But it is, it's it's terrific, and you're seeing them on the restaurant menus. And I mentioned the coastline. Well, now they're taking advantage of that coastline so that um, the salmon, uh, Irish salmon, smoked salmon, is certainly as good as Scandinavian, Norwegian smoked salmon, or even Scottish smoked salmon. The um, crabs and lobsters are absolutely delicious. Uh, they're oysters. I'm not an oyster fancier, but I'm told that uh, by my friends that, oh, yeah, I mean, there's good as anything in the, in the UK. Their lamb is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Their chickens, as I mentioned, uh, taste as good as the best in, in France at this point. Um, their beef is not, because as all over Europe, their beef is only grass-fed. American beef is grass-fed, then finished on corn in feedlots. That's what gives our beef such an extraordinary, rich, sweet, marbleized marbleization in the muscle. So there's no comparison. I, I ate one of the best steaks available in uh, at the Shelburne Hotel in Dublin. And while it was good, it was nothing close to a USDA prime steak. So with that exception, um, the food just across the board is wonderful. Um, because they have such good dairy now, their desserts are going to be uh, terrific. Um, so when you say, what is Irish food? It's Irish ingredients made by young chefs uh, who have been very well trained on the continent and the UK, who will take a piece of wonderful Irish fish or lobster and cook it uh, with local seasonings and spices and salt um, and pepper from again from from ireland and make it in a simple way and have a starch on the side with those i mean you you, you just don't have a meal without potatoes over there uh despite <laughs> potatoes having come from america they were introduced by Sir walter raleigh um the white potato um and uh um, they're in every single meal and they really are delicious um so just across the board and this wasn't true 20 years ago frankly Food was good 20 years ago. It was much better 10 years ago. And now I rank it with uh, certainly the best in the British Isles. Wow. Well, one endorsement for the Irish Travel Bureau. And then, you know, get you know, we want, we want a commission for doing this advertisement for uh, <laughs> the, the Irish Travel Bureau and uh, Food of Ireland. Brand. I didn't mention any brand names, although I will one. Guinness, Guinness is unique. There are other porters and stouts, but Guinness is a unique product. And it's true, it tastes better there than it does export it. That just mm. simply is true. Um, um, and then Irish whiskey, of which there used to be four distilleries on Irish whiskey as recently as 10 years ago. Now there are dozens and dozens and mm. terrific Irish whiskey being done. So, you know, for all those reasons, they don't make any wine. Uh, so you can forget about that. You still have to drink. Uh, but they have very good wine lists in the restaurants. So, and in a future time, perhaps we could talk about the restaurants I actually went to, and what they're what they're doing with great names like Matt the Thresher. Oh, I love it. Matt the Thresher is a great, wonderful seafood restaurant. Well, this has been wonderful. I'm uh, I'm getting hungry. 
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.